So 7.3, the discriminant. Now, as unfamiliar as you are with the word discriminant, you have seen it already. It looks like this. In fact, it's not even that. You, you saw it here. It's really just this part of it. Okay, so in the quadratic formula, it's just this. this is, I'll highlight it. Boom. This part right here. B squared minus 4AC, which is in the quadratic formula, right? Now, like we saw on the last lesson, is if this ends up being a negative, then our answers are imaginary or complex. Uh, so if we end up with something that's negative here, that's what this is saying. You, get, you end up with two solutions, but they're not real. So they're complex or imaginary. If this were to equal to zero, then you end up with one solution because you'd be adding and subtracting zero, which doesn't really do anything. And that's when you get one solution, which we did talk briefly about in the last lesson. If this is positive, then you end up with two real solutions. If, it's, if, if, you, if you end up with a perfect square, then it's a rational solution. If it's a non-perfect square, it's automatically irrational. Uh, both of them. Both of them will be that way. Um, it, it doesn't really include the square root, but you could if you wanted to really find out if it was. So I'm going to keep this, keep this table on, on, on the screen for us. Uh, like I said, then hopefully it helps us out. But you got these options. You got these options for these two problems. You just fill in the blank. So if the discriminant of a quad quadratic equation is 2, okay, then you'd have in, in your quadratic form, you'd have plus or minus. Right. The right. discriminant is 2, right? So it'd be the square root of 2. Um, whatever that is, the square root of 2 is not, it's not a perfect square. So for the options that we have, uh, um, they are real, but it's irrational. irrational. Right there, so... Yeah, we got to take this one up here. Two Boom. Real two, solutions, right? two irrational. real. They are real, but, but they are irrational. On this next one, right? So, so again, in this, in this quadratic, plus or minus, it's the square root, but the, the negative two here is inside that square root. And since it's the square root of a negative, it really, this, this negative right here tells us that it's an, it's an imaginary value. So imaginary or not real, which is why on this one we say, uh, the only option that, that we have in this one is it's uh, two non-real solutions on this one. Now, you can, use this, you can use this table right here to kind of figure that part out. I, I like to just think of it in, inside the quadratic, so I don't have to memorize all this garbage. You can. But uh, if you can just think about it this way, the discriminant being negative makes it automatically two non-real solutions. Or if it's a non-perfect square, then it is too, ri too real, but irrational in this case. Now, if this one was a 4 right here, that's a perfect square. Then we could say that there's two rational solutions. So, so the thing about rational numbers, this goes back, but rational numbers are decimals that terminate or repeat. Or they're values that can be written as a fraction formally, whether that's proper or improper fractions or mixed numbers if you want to go that route, but I don't know which route you want to go, so that I kind of included it all. So you're going to see problems like this one as well. This is, uh, it's, a, it's multiple choice. Just choose one, right? Determine the number and type of solutions for this equation, 5x squared plus 13x plus 6. So we're going to figure out the discriminant, right? And uh, for this one, we have a b value, a b value that's 13, so my b is 13. I'll fill in the rest later, but uh, my a value here is 5. So this A is going to be a 5, and then the C value here is 6. So I'll replace the C with 6. So it's 13 squared minus 4 times 5. Oh, I put C, dang it. <laughs> I think I can. That's a decent recovery. All right, now I'm going to put this in the calculator, right? So I got 13 squared minus 4 times 5 times 6. Enter. Boom. I get 49 out of all this. I'm not going to evaluate it uh, by the order of operations, but you're welcome to. I get 49, and as it turns out, 49 is a perfect square, which is important because this means in our uh, quadratic, you'd have something plus or minus the square root of 49, and uh, the square root of 49 then is a perfect square. So you end up with plus or minus, square root of 49 is 7, and 7 
is rational, which means that these values as well are going to keep this rational. We have rational answers and you can see two different rational number solutions. It looks like it's this one. Let me just check. So we got two different irrational. We know it's rational because it's just a seven. Is it too imaginary? No, it can't be that. One repeated rational number solution. No, it's not repeated. If it were, then this would have to be zero. One repeated irrational number solution. I'm trying to think how that would happen, but it's definitely not irrational. So let's take that, that equation right there and just make it a quadratic formula. So I'm going to take that and I'll add x to both sides just to make that zero, right? So now it equals zero, which is what we want, but I'll have to add x. I'm putting that right in the middle so that it's in descending order so that it takes on the quadratic formula form. Quadratic form, there we go. So plus x and then plus x. There's, there's no like terms with the x that I can combine it with, not even the x squared because it's a power of 2. Now, if it helps you to see this middle coefficient is 1, feel free to do it. But that's my, that's my b value. So my b value here is 1. And then in my discriminant, I'll take my b value and replace 1. Now, before we continue, I'm just telling you right now that b being 1 is it's pretty small, which means that I'm expecting my answer to be probably, it's probably going to be, negative. it's probably going to be negative, okay? Which means that I'm expecting right now two non-real solutions. But let's find out for sure. Well, I got to finish, but the A value is 2. So the, I'm going to replace the A with 2. I'll put it in parentheses this time. And then the C value, I, I have a positive 6. So the C is positive 6. Everything else just kind of falls in place. So it's 1 squared minus 4 times 2 times 6, which... Um, negative 47. Negative... Um, I think I can do this in my head. Negative 47 without any help. Now, I, I don't need the, I, I, I probably shouldn't have circled that because this is not my answer. This is just the, the value of the discriminant, okay? So my, my discriminant is negative 47. So again, in the quadratic formula, that would be the square root of negative 47. Well, since it's the square root of a negative, um, then I know that I'm, I'm looking for a square root of a negative. That's, that's an imaginary value, which means imaginary which means that I'm looking at two non-real solutions, just like I kind of anticipated because the B value was so small. Uh, again, not, it's not one real solution, not two real solutions. I don't know how you get none of the above, but we'll cross those out just to be clear. Now, we, uh, for this assignment, we also need to be able to write equations from the solutions. But the good news is, is that we've done this before in reverse, right? So in the past, what we did, we took a, uh, we took a trinomial, and then we factored it either by grouping or usually something like this. And then we said, oh, if it equals zero, which is important, then we say that uh, you got the A value and B value, right? Uh, you would solve this. So in the past would say whatever, I'm doing this with the letters, but they usually would be numbers, right? So this one would say, well, X minus A, this would be equal zero. And then you, in the past, we would use a principle of equality here, and then you say, well, x equals whatever the a value was, just the a, not the minus, but it's kind of the opposite thing right there. And then we did the same thing with this one. So it'd say, well, if we can get x plus b to equal zero, and b would be some kind of number, then you just add b to both sides to zero that out with the principle of equality, and you get x as b as well. Okay, so what happens now is that instead of doing this from the trinomial working down towards the answers, they're giving us the answers, which means that we're going to make two binomials like this, make them equal to zero, right? You'll have your x's. And then if, if they give you an a value, then you'd say, well, oh, these should always be minus, by the way. Uh, so if they give us an a value, let's say that they said, well, one of the values a, one of the solutions is 5. Okay, then this one would be x minus 5. And they said, well, the other one is uh, negative 14i, because they will. Uh, then it, it'd say negative 14i. Now you notice I put the negative in the as a plus right there. That's on purpose because minus a negative makes that a plus. Well, yeah, so it's a, it would have been a minus a b, but it's just really two solutions. They're going to say, here are two solutions. They won't say a and b on the assignment. So I just kind of, I kind of jimmy rigged that one. So x minus 5, x plus 14i. And then you say, well, I'm going to solve this. You just use uh, distribution. 
which some people prefer to call foil for some reason. So I'm not actually solving that one. We're gonna see some examples where we will actually finish this off. And uh, so this, this, by the way, is an equation, but it's not the equation they want. You gotta actually distribute and then simplify into its um, quadratic form, standard, quadratic standard form, standard quadratic form. Now it'd be nice if these were just regular numbers, but they're not, and that's okay because we can take these two, the x's, so x is one third, x is one half. Those are solutions that would make whatever the original quadratic true. So again, I, I say, well, I'm gonna just take this and make it the two binomials, the equals zero, right? So it's always x minus. And uh, the first value I got is one third, and the second value I have is one half, okay? So this is the two binomials that would have made those two solutions, but I gotta work backwards and make it the original quadratic formula. So not formula, but just the quadratic equ equation, quadratic, the quadratic. So I, I'm gonna do some distribution here. So that'd be x times x, which is x squared. And then I've got x times, that's negative one half. So that's negative one half x's. Uh, and then I'll distribute the negative one third to the x. So that's a negative one third x. And a negative one third times a negative one half would be a positive one sixth. So we're pretty close. This still equals zero, that's nice. But I can combine some like terms here, right? So I got my x squared, and then I got my positive one sixth. Those have to stay because there's no other like terms to combine with those. But I do have a x's to combine. So I got negative one half x's, and then a negative one third x's. So in my calculator, I just do negative one half minus one third, and it says you got negative five sixths x's right there. Um, I did not test this one in the assignment to make sure that this works, but it should. Unfortunately, this is not what it was showing me. So I'm gonna finish this off. What I don't, what I, what it showed on the assignment is no denominators. I assume this would work, but I just can't verify that it would. So what are we gonna do? I'm gonna take this, see I can get rid of those denominators by multiplying the whole equation by six. So then I'd have six x squared minus, six times five six would be five x's and six times one six would be one. And this, well, six times zero as well, that's still zero. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna box this one in because this is the answer that it showed me. Although I, I think this one would work, I just can't verify that it does. Yeah, that, that's a good question. If, because it's saying, well, we want a minimum leading coefficient. If this had shown, and this would be equivalent by the way, if it showed 12x squared minus 10x plus two equals zero, you can factor out a two and then you could divide both sides by two, essentially getting rid of it, and then you get you end up back here. So if you ever see that you can factor stuff out from these three terms, then you should, and then essentially just divide both sides by it to make it simplified or just get rid of that, uh, whatever you factor it out. There we go. On this one, we got the two solutions. We got uh, negative five plus four i and negative five minus four i. For those of you shrewd individuals, you hopefully remember that these are conjugates not that it matters right now, but these are conjugates. Well, for my equation then that I'm gonna start with that we'll then work with after that, right? I'm gonna have two binomials and I am giving myself extra space here on purpose that equals zero. So it'd be X minus and X minus, but I'll take the first one. That would have been a negative five plus four I and I'm using parentheses there on purpose. The second one though was a negative five uh, minus 4i. So from here, yeah, there's some evaluation that has to happen. In fact, there's a negative one in both of these that needs to be distributed into the parentheses, both sets of parentheses. So negative one times negative five, I mean, working on the left here, that's a positive five. And negative one times four i would be negative four i's. Where's the one from? All right, so that's all the distribution I get for that first one. So I got uh, x plus five minus four i. Maybe I should have given myself more space. Uh, then I've got to do some distribution over here as well, right? So that's a negative one times negative five, which is positive five. And the negative one times negative four I would be positive four I. And yep, this still equals zero. All right. So we've distributed, we replaced our solutions into the two binomials. And we now have two trinomials that are needing to be multiplied together. So we'll do some distribution, right? So I got uh, x times x here first. Let's see if I can fit this in here, but then I've got x times five, which would be positive five x's. 
And then I even have an x times that positive 4i over there. Now I'm going to show it as positive 4i x's. You can put 4xi if you want. It doesn't matter. You can do i 4x. It's just you drive math people nuts if you did that. Just not me because I'm, I'm not that big of a nerd. I am, just not that big. Uh, so that's distributing the first x. Now I must distribute this positive 5 first to the x. That would be positive 5x. And then distribute to the 5. Positive 5 times positive 5 is positive 25. And then 5 times 4i would be positive 20i's. Uh, okay, let's see if I can do this with enough space. I've got to do the negative 4i distributed now. So negative 4i times the x there, that'd be negative 4. Again, I'm going to show it as 4i x's. And then negative 4i times 5 would be negative 20i's. And then negative 4i's times positive 4i's would be negative 16i squared. So I, did, I have just enough space to put this equal to 0. So that's a lot of distribution. It's not a hard distribution. It just is a lot, right? Uh, but at this point, I'm going to take any of these and try to zero out any of them that I can. For example, this positive 4ix and this negative 4ix, that those become zeros. Same with this 20i positive and this ne negative 20i. Those are going to become zeros as well. I don't see anything else that zeroes out. What I do see here is that my x squared is going to stay x squared. I also see that I've got some x's that I can combine. 5x's and 5x's would be positive 10x's. Now, I have two constants. I got 25, and then this is a constant right here, negative 16i squared. Yeah, but it's got an i right there. It's not a constant. It is because this i squared is actually negative 1 which we learned, I think, last time, 7.1, right? Yeah, so it, it, it ends up being negative 16 times that negative 1, which is actually positive 16. Yeah. So it ends up these two become a positive 16. Now I can see that I will combine this uh, 25 and 16, which is a positive uh, 41. And this all equals zero. Now, do I have the lowest common, uh, lowest co leading coefficient? I do. I guess it said that you have to have a leading coefficient of one. Whatever. And that's why this one is done. So uh, that's the equation they're looking for. I, I know a lot of this looks kind of sloppy, but it's so colorful, it's pretty, you know? All right, so for this one, yeah, we're going to change this into a standard form. We'll come back to that. I need the space. But I do have my two answers, right? So I got 2 plus 2 times the square root of 10. I also have 2 minus 2 times the square root of 10, and that's nice. So I'm going to make my two binomials. Really, they're going to end up being trinomials, though, right? So I got this one, and then I got this other one. This should all equal 0. It should always be x minus whatever these values are. Now, you notice I'm putting these in parentheses. That's on purpose because that negative does not apply to just one of those two values. In my answer, it applies to both, which is why we'd use distribution. So the first one, 2 plus 2 times the square root of 10. The other one, 2 minus 2 times the square root of 10. I guess I should have made those bigger to fit those in, but that's good enough. And then again, so these minus signs, it's really a negative one that I'm distributing. You just can't see the one. They're phantom ones. I'm going to show them, and then I can distribute. So that's a negative 1 times 2, which is negative 2. Negative 1 times 2 times the square root of 10, which is negative 2 times the square root of 10. Uh, of course, we still have the x in front there. So that's this. It's not a binomial anymore. It's now a trinomial, kind of. And then we'll do the second one. So negative 1 times 2, that's negative 2. And then negative 1 times negative 2 times the square root of 10 is positive 2 times the square root of 10 uh, with my x in front. Okay, so this all equals 0. And, uh, well, here come the colors. So I'm now ready to distribute or... Well, you can't say foil on this one because there's more than binomial. No, it's a winner. So I got x times x, which is x squared. I should give myself more space, shouldn't I? Let's move this over a little bit. Uh, there we go. So I got my x squared. x times x is x squared. Then I've got x times negative 2, which would be negative 2x's. 
and then I've got x times two times the square root of 10. I'm gonna show it like this. It's positive two x, and then with my square root of 10. I think I can fit this. So now I'm gonna distribute this negative two. So first to the x, so that'd be a negative two x's. And then negative two times a negative two, kind of missed the mark there, but that'd be positive two. Sorry, positive four. <laughs> it's getting late. And then a negative two times a positive two square root of 10 would be a negative four square roots of 10. And then, yeah, we got some more distribution here. We got a negative two square root of 10 times x, which would be negative two x square roots of 10. And some of you may notice what's happening with those square roots of 10 right there, but let's continue. So negative two square root of 10 times negative two is positive four square roots of 10. And then also negative two square root of 10 times positive two square root of 10. Um, I'm going to write this out because I'm actually going to work on that, okay? Because uh, here I've got a negative 2 square root of 10 times positive 2 square root of 10. Yeah, so some of you guys are ahead of the game right here. Uh, what I have here is negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4, but also negative 10 times the square root of 10 is, well, it's positive 10, which makes this 40. negative 40. Oh, well, <laughs> maybe I... Should have given myself more space there. But this all equals zero still. And now I look for anything that I can combine. So let's see what we got. Um, I don't see any other x squareds there, so we're going to keep that one. Move it down, x squared. No other x squareds to combine with it. So let's look at, uh, I got negative 2x there. I got another negative 2x. That's all the x without square roots that I can combine. So when I combine these, I get negative 4x's. Okay, what about this uh, 2x squared of 10? Well, there's another negative 2x squared of 10. Those are going to zero out, so I'm crossing them out. Not, you can say they cancel out, but it becomes a zero. And then we got, uh, well, I got a 4. I'll use a different color here. I got a 4 and negative 40, so I can combine those. 4 and negative 40 should end up as a negative 36. Uh, and then we got this uh, negative 4 square root of 10 right here with this positive 4 square root of 10. Well, that's going to be another 0 right there. We already used up the 40, so it looks like this just equals 0. And, uh, well, I think that's it. I, I know some of you guys are like, I really want to factor that out and see what happens. You couldn't because it's uh, you have to use the... Um, the uh, quadratic formula to do that.